Next in our essential skills series, we're gonna talk about the bandsaw. Bandsaw is a very versatile tool in the shop and it's one of those tools that I recommend you get as soon as you can in the beginning. Uh, there's lots of different sizes, horsepowers and all of that. And the trick to bandsaws is using it for what it's capable for. If you have a 14 inch bandsaw with a three quarter horse motor and you're trying to uh, resaw a, an eight quarter piece of walnut that's 12 inches wide, you're gonna have a tough time. But if you are trying to cut curves and resawing small boards, then uh, you're gonna be using your bandsaw for what it can do. This one, this 17 inch uh, two horsepower bandsaw from Grizzly is phenomenal. It, it cuts through, it resaws anything up to 12 inches like it's cutting through butter. But let's talk about how to set up a bandsaw cut safely, and what to do if there's issues with your bandsaw. First things first is tension. A bandsaw is tensioned in the back. Some of them have levers like this. Some have screw adjustments up here. Uh, it's really important that you leave your bandsaw detensioned when you're not using it and you go home for the night. Uh, the changes in temperatures between night and day, if your bandsaw is tensioned, will cause the blade to expand and contract more than it needs to, which will cause stresses and uh, cause your bandsaw to fail prematurely. This is the knob that controls the tilt of the top wheel. It's really important that those wheels are coplanar and that your bandsaw is riding in the middle of the wheel. Let me show you what I mean. So like I said, the bandsaw blade needs to be riding in the center of the wheel. And the reason is your bandsaw wheel is slightly curved. And so when it's riding in the middle, it's not gonna tilt forward or backwards, uh, which will cause you to have a wandering cut. The number one reason for a wandering cut is a dull blade. After that, it's that your bandsaw is not properly put in the center of the wheels, and then it's your guards. Most of them will have either a number gauge or a, uh, inches gauge that shows the size of your bandsaw. So you want your bandsaw to be riding in the center of your wheel. Uh, let's talk about the guards and how to set those up and what proper tension looks like. So your bandsaw has six guards, three upper and three lower guards. You have your rear guards and your side guards and that's what helps keep your bandsaw blade aligned with the cutting surface. So setup is as follows. Once you have your blade tensioned, and there's several different tests for tensioning your blade. There's the flutter test, but what I like to do is I just tighten it until it makes a pinging sound when you pluck it. This blade's a little thick to make that sound, but you'll, tell, you'll be able to tell as you tighten it, it gets higher and higher pitch, sort of like a musical instrument. So what I like to do to set my rear guard, the way the rear guard works is it, as the bandsaw blade goes, this supports it from being pushed back and rolls with it. Some bandsaws will have different styles of these guards, but they all are set up exactly the same. So what you need to do is take something that is the width of like a dollar bill or a business card, and when your blade's under tension, I'll just press it up, and this is something you'll probably be able to get by eye after a while, but I just put a business card or a dollar bill in there, I remove it, and you can see there's a little light gap behind there so that the bandsaw blade can come back, and when it goes, it'll as it gets pushed back, it'll come in contact with this and it'll spin and keep it going and tracking in the right direction. The same thing goes for your side guards. So what I'll do with my side guards here is I'll bring them both in contact with my blade so that they're perfectly touching. And then I'll just take my finger and just barely touch the blade both ways and then tighten those. The Ideal is there should just be a teeny bit of play. So the proper location for those is just right behind the gullet of your tooth. Basically what you can see is you create sort of a little entrapment for your saw blade so that just the teeth are sticking out and it can't go left and right or too far back and that keeps it tracking straight. The same goes for your lower guards. I won't show you because that's really hard to get a camera up in there, but everything should be the same upper and lower. The lower guard will not have a bar for going forwards and backwards, so if you don't get it right behind the teeth gullets, that's, that's fine. You can just work with what you have. So let's talk about blades. Okay, now most people keep two or three types of blades. You have basically a blade for resawing and a blade for curves. Now this is a great intermediate blade here. It's a three eighths inch, uh, four tooth per inch, alternate rake bandsaw blade. Alternate rake refers to teeth that go in each direction. Uh, four teeth per inch refers to the amount of teeth per inch of the bandsaw blade. And the three eighths inch refers to the width of the blade. This blade is great. Uh, I believe it's a Timberwolf blade. It resaws really well. It'll cut 
intermediate curves really well. Uh, this is my fine blade. I only use this for cutting really tight radiuses and making templates. And then this is my very large resaw blade, which honestly, I don't know that it does any better of a job than this blade. I just have it as sort of kind of a beater blade so that I can just rip through stuff and not worry about damaging my really good blade. The teeth, the way they work, and Matthias Wandel did a great video on this, I'll link it in the description, is the gullets are what remove the sawdust from your material and take it away and remove heat when you're cutting. And that's why we had on a resaw blade, there's a lot less teeth because you need this room because you're removing so much material because you're going the full width of the board. You need this larger area to be able to carry sawdust out of the cut. If you can't carry sawdust out of the cut, it will cause your blade to be stuck and you can't push forward until you've removed those sawdust. So a lot of times even a blade will try and wander out of that if you're feeding too fast. Because it can't remove sawdust, it tries to find other directions to go. Um, so let's talk about feed and how to make cuts on a bandsaw. Now when you're cutting with a bandsaw, you want to determine what type of cut you're going to do and that's going to change the way that you feed and approach the machine with your material. Now there's obviously you can cut curves, you can do rip cuts, a lot of people will break down larger material uh, for rough dimensioning so that they don't have to run a huge piece through the table saw which causes tensions to be released and can cause it to pinch the blade. Uh, your bandsaw can be a lot safer for breaking down rough dimensioning. The other types of cuts are resawing and curve cutting. So those can be approached several different ways. So first thing you want to do is ensure that your blade is square. And I'm using this one, two, three block here. My blade is square, but if it wasn't, there is an adjustment underneath the table that will tilt the bed of your bandsaw. Uh, the next thing is you want to make sure your fence is square. Now this is an external resaw fences. Most fences on 14 inch bandsaws are about this high. And so a lot of times people will build a, uh, external resaw fences that they can clamp to their other fence. Those work great. You just want to make sure that they're square. When we talk about feed rate for a bandsaw, uh, first of all, when you're cutting, you want your guard to be just above your material. That is the safest place. There's less chance of, that your hands can get in there and get in the way. And it helps the, because you've brought the guards closer together from keeping the bandsaw from drifting. So as far as your feed rate goes, if you're cutting with your board laid flat down and you're cutting curves or you're rough dimensioning, you can feed a lot faster because like I said before, you're clearing the sawdust out and there isn't material inside the curve of your cut stopping your blade from going forward. So you can feed a little bit faster, but you never want to push hard with a bandsaw. You want to just push at the rate it will let you. As soon as you feel any resistance, you want to slow down and go slow. When I cut on a bandsaw, I cut about this fast when I'm doing cuts this way. And when I'm resawing, I sort of just lean into the board and let it go as fast as it will go. I don't try and force it whatsoever because you're removing so much material that you need time for your blade to clear out the sawdust. So here, unfortunately for this cut, I can't bring my fence down to resaw. Um, but resawing is one of the most common features of a bandsaw. What I like to do is I take a marking gauge, I'll set it to half the width of the board. And if you want to be lazy about it, here's a little trick, is you run it one way, flip it over, and then you know that you're not centered or that your center's in between those lines. So then you can take it and go right in between those two lines, and then that's your center. And you know that because switch it around here, and you know your center's right in between those two close lines. So what I do is I take a marking gauge, and I run it up the center of the board, and I'll do both sides here so that I know that's my curve here. And then I'll run it down the edge of the board. And this line isn't really important for anything other than the fact that you know that you're drifting or not. Then it's really important to take something that holds it in. I like to use uh, these mag switches because it'll really help keep the board against the fence. And then I'll use a couple of styles of push sticks. I'll use something like this, maybe for a taller board. This one, we might not be able to even fit it in there. And that keeps pressure against the fence. You never want to go past your blade with your push stick because you're going to pinch your blade in between your two pieces of board. So I keep it behind my board and keep pushing it like this. And then I have a push stick from behind with a hook on it that will grab my board right here. 
and that keeps in case you slip your fingers don't go into it and when you reach the very end of your board you can keep pushing without fear of hitting your fingers. So let me show you, we'll do a cut here really quick just to show you what I mean. So obviously you want eyes and ears for safety when you're on a bandsaw and uh, I'll show you how I, I make this cut. As you can see, I got right there on my line. Everything's good. Um, the blade didn't wander at all. We had good setup here. You can see the bandsaw marks, which will happen anytime you cut with a bandsaw, but there's no big waves in it, anything like that. And that's what happens when you use proper setup and proper cutting technique um, to get a great result. So that's how you make a cut properly on a bandsaw. And when you're done, remember to detention your bandsaw so that you don't stress that blade out. Um, so again, number one reason that you're getting blade drift is probably because of an unsharp blade. But after that, follow these steps, you're gonna get a great cut. Also, if you have a 14 inch bandsaw and you've put a riser block in it, that can cause a lot of vibration when you're cutting, but sometimes you just have to deal with that for the extra resaw capacity. If, you're, if you do all of these things and you're still getting poor cuts, um, I would try things like making changing your urethane on your tires, making sure that your tires are aligned, and that uh, your bandsaw is secured firmly to the floor because all of those things can also affect cuts. Um, bandsaws can be one of the most useful tools in the shop. A lot of people who are hand tool workers will use a bandsaw to break down materials and then finish it off with hand planes and things like that. Um, so hopefully this helps you. Please subscribe if you're new here. We've got a lot of videos like this. We're doing a new joint series and then of course our regular build videos. Um, check me out on Instagram, stay safe in the shop guys and have a wonderful day.